Did you know that almost 92% of Japan's population lives in the city? This might not be that surprising of a statistic, but it does explain why Japan's urban centers are so dense. Here, millions of people are packed together like sardines, with the only roads being more so of an afterthought than the pre-planned grids we're used to here in North America. But this really isn't an issue for the majority of the urban Japanese population, as car ownership rates are fairly low. In Tokyo, between all 23 wards, car ownership is only 32%. However, these small streets and dense urban areas are a concern for the nation's truck drivers, who are responsible for completing the final step of Japan's supply chain, financially composing over 90% of the nation's transportation industry. In Japan, there are the big four manufacturers, Hino, Isuzu, UD, and Fuso, which dominate the Japanese market, and though uncommon, there are a small number of European-branded trucks such as Scania, Volvo, and Mercedes in the country. The vast majority of Japanese trucks are day cabs, as most drivers are local and don't have to live out of their trucks. In addition to this, day cabs are smaller and easier to drive in narrow areas. Japanese infrastructure, much like certain parts of Europe, was originally built on a human scale instead of a car scale as our western cities are. While Japan has plenty of regular-sized roads, it's not uncommon for truckers to have to navigate small alleyways or tight areas in order to reach their final destination. There are two separate standards for trailer size and weight limit in the country, which has led to two dominant trailer configurations, the semi-trailer and the full trailer. A semi-trailer is a trailer which is partially supported by the cab, not entirely by its own axles, whereas a full trailer can support its own weight. In Japan, both of these trailer types are used, semi-trailers by independent cabs and full trailers by rigid trucks. On expressways where there is more space, semi-trailers are limited in length to 16.5 meters, while rigid trucks with a full trailer on the back are limited to 18 meters. On most non-expressway roads, you're likely to see trucks with 4, 6, or 8 wheels on a rigid chassis. Some of these, mostly the longer ones, feature two turning axles for a tighter radius. Size requirements on these roads are stringent, with rigid trucks being limited to 12 meters in length and 2.5 meters in width. That's not to say that longer articulated trucks or rigid trucks with full trailers cannot leave the expressway, but that they can only do so in specified areas. If you're curious about specific weight limits and distribution requirements, check the first link in the description below. Japan is also known for low speed limits, as the highest national speed limit is capped at 80 kilometers an hour. Though most trucks have the ability to go faster than this, there's less need for high speed travel as driving distances in the country aren't far. One major benefit for truck drivers in Japan is the lack of transportation authority, or at least the flavor of authority that we're used to here in the West. In Japan, most regulations are dealt with remotely through many cameras and sensors which line Japan's expressways, so drivers don't have to stress about being pulled over. There is also this overall sense of greater trust among Japanese trucking companies, as it is a highly regulated industry with frequent evaluations. It's not uncommon to see trucks equipped with cameras, tachographs, GPS trackers, and various other features which collect data to increase overall safety. Japan is so serious about driver safety that since 2011, breathalyzer tests have been mandatory for all commercial drivers prior to beginning their shift, in order to combat drunk driving related accidents. You can easily identify commercial trucks in Japan based on their iconic green license plate, which expressway cameras use to identify vehicles and perform weight in motion tests, where a vehicle's gross weight is measured automatically as they drive down the road. Now, I would be amiss if I didn't mention one of the coolest parts of Japanese trucking, which is these highly decorated trucks known as Dekotora. In my pronunciation. This subculture began following a series of movies released in the 70s and 80s called Toraku Yaru or Truck Guys, which showed truck drivers in these really flashy and well designed rigs. Instantly, a Decatora fan swept the country. Later in the 90s, the culture was heavily influenced by Gundam, which are these fictional military robots that leaked into Japanese culture. You might know them from the popular figurines. For all its ups and downs, tight corners, and precise turns, Japanese trucks, like all global trucks, keep this world running and serve as another, albeit flashy, reminder that without these dedicated men and women on the road, we'd all still be living in huts. Thanks for watching. I've got some more trucking videos up and coming, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. And if you're interested in gaming content, which I used to post a lot of, feel free to check out my second channel, which is linked in the description below. Thanks again, and goodbye.